Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Busari Malayo and I'm a registered nurse living and practicing in Nigeria and on this channel I film content related to nursing and healthcare. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about wounds and wound care. If you're here to subscribe to the channel, please join the family by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking on the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I upload another video. With that being said, let's get into the topic for today. So we're starting with the definition of wounds. So wounds are basically a break or disruption in the skin integrity or underlying tissues usually caused by injury or trauma. This is a very simple definition of what wounds are. Now there are different types of wounds you could have as a person or whether you're a nurse and people come to the hospital, you may have to like treat or dress different types of wounds. Now based on the types, we have incised wounds, we have um, lacerations. Now incised wounds are basically clean or straight cuts that are often caused by sharp objects while you have lacerations to be like jagged or irregular wounds resulting from the tearing of the skin. You have abrasions which are scrapes that removes the layer of the skin like when you scrape your skin on the floor or something like that. Then you have avulsions which is when the tissue is forcibly torn away from the skin. These are different types of wounds but you can also classify wounds into different types depending on different characteristics. So I'm going to be diving into eight different ways to classify wounds. So the first classification is based on the cause. So we have traumatic wounds surgical wounds, pressure ulcers, as well as burns. While traumatic wounds occur from when you have like an accident or you fall, then you have surgical wounds which are from surgical incisions that are made during a surgical procedure. You have burns as wounds that are caused from exposure to heat, extreme cold, electricity or chemical burns. Then you have pressure ulcers which develop majorly on bony prominences probably because the area of the skin has been deprived of oxygen for a long time or there has been a lot of pressure on that place. So that's the classification of injuries based on or classification of wounds <laughs> basically based on their cause. Then you have classifications of wounds based on the depth. You have the superficial wounds which is just um, on the epidermis or above the dermis. Then you have partial thickness wounds which Spans beyond the epidermis into the dermis of the skin and you also have full thickness wounds which are wounds that take up the entire skin and the entire underlying tissues then you can also classify wounds according to their healing times and you classify them into acute wounds and chronic wounds acute wounds are of um, recent onset and they heal faster while chronic wounds are like the exact opposite they spend a long duration of time and they heal slowly you can also classify wounds based on degree of contamination so you have clean wound clean contaminated wounds contaminated wounds and infected wounds for the clean wounds they occur probably during a surgical procedure probably when you cut the skin for clean contaminated some of them also occur during surgical procedures in a, um, in a third environment but it depends on which part of the body is being operated on so in most times when you're operating on places like the GIT like the gastrointestinal tract it's going to be most likely a clean but contaminated wound do you get my point then you can move to um, the contaminated wounds which are wounds that occur in dirty environments probably when you sleep on the floor in a dirty area and you get wounded you fall and there are a lot of microbes there then you have infected wounds which are wounds that are already colonized by a lot of bacteria and microbes you can further classify wounds based on healing process so you have wounds that heal with first intention wounds that heal with second intention as well as wounds that heal with third intention now for wounds that heal with um, first intention the edges of the wounds are well opposed and there is little to no scarring like there may not even be any scar by the time the wound is done healing that's wounds that heal with first intention for wounds that heal with second intention the hedges are not well opposed as when compared to the wounds that would heal with first intention and there is um, scar formation where these wounds are done healing for third um, intention wounds that heal with third intention basically sometimes these wounds they are left open for a while they are being dressed probably twice daily or once daily 
and when the risks of infections have been reduced or are minimal then they do like a secondary closure and they keep dressing to the wound fully heals and there's a lot of scar tissue formation and sometimes there could even be keloid formations if there is overproduction of collagen after the wounds have been healed. Sixth classification of wound is based on your presentation that is why you have open wound and closed wound and just as the name implies for open wounds the skin is visibly broken you can see it during assessment but for closed wounds there might be some redness behind the skin but the screen is not sorry the skin of the screen is not broken so that's just the difference between the two the seventh classification is based on the amount of tissues that are involved in the wound so you now have clean wood and complicated wood for the clean wounds you just have the skin and some subcutaneous tissues that are affected but for complicated you have deeper structures like muscles tendons nerves and blood vessels that are being affected when you talk about complicated wounds and the eighth classification of wounds is not something you'll find in all textbooks but you know nothing we have several school of thoughts so some authors would actually classify wounds based on certain characteristics like linear if there's a clean straight cut in the wound so they will classify that as a linear wound if it's a puncture wound that is probably coming from a sharp object that creates like a deep hole then you have true and true wounds some would say gunshot wounds and true and true wounds are very similar but most of the time not all gunshot wounds will result in a true and true wound so true and true wounds are probably when there's something that um, perforates on one side of the body through and comes out to the other side of the body probably there's like a long um, stick that uh, let's say it pierces into the upper arm and you can see the um, stick still coming out behind the arm so that's like a true and true wound and um, in some gunshot wounds you really have that that the bullet will pierce through um, the anterior part of the body and see another exit point at the posterior part of the body so those are like true and true wound and sometimes the bullet will not go through and you have it stuck somewhere in the body depends just before i move on if you're a nursing student and you're watching this i'm going to leave a link to my website down in the description box below so you can take practice tests on different topics that you've been taught in class even mocks for your council exams you can take the test as many times as possible you get to view your score immediately you're uh, you're done with the test and you also get to see the correct answers the wrong answers as well as explanations as to why those answers are correct or wrong yeah so that is that about the um, different classifications of wounds now let's talk about the wound healing process now there are four phases involved in the wound healing process you have the hemostasis stage you have the inflammatory phase you have the proliferative phase as well as the maturation phase so basically the hemostasis phase is where bleeding is controlled and blood clots are formed so in the Hemostasis stage this is like the first response of the body to wounds. There is a lot of constriction of blood vessels to reduce blood flow. Then you have um, also have platelets coming around that area to form blood clots to stop bleeding. Basically, that is the simple explanation of what happens in that phase. Then when you get to the inflammatory phase, which is from like probably day two to day five of the wound healing. Um, process sometimes three to five depending on how extensive the wound is then you have a lot of white blood cells migrating to that area to take off dead tissues and there's um, the signs of inflammation are now evident the area of the wound becomes painful red swollen and hot now talking about the third phase which is the proliferative phase it lacks most times it lasts for about um, several weeks and that is where you have granulation tissues form which are very um, pink they are pinkish soft tissues that form on the surface of the wound then during the proliferative phase as well you also have new blood vessels forming to supply nutrients and oxygen to the wound site then the last phase of wound healing is the maturation phase which can take weeks months and years depending on how extensive the wound has been so for the maturation phase you have collagen fibers reorganizing and gaining strength then the wound area or the scar area starts gaining strength and is looking very similar to the pre-wound or pre-injury state though it's not going to be exactly like the pre-injury state hope you get my point now 
For nurses, how do you care for the wounds of your patients? How do we um, ensure that these wounds heal properly, they don't come down with infections, and we minimize pain in our patients? So that's basically talking about wound management. So there are different things that actually go into wound management that you would have to handle as a nurse. First, there will be pain management, so you might have to um, administer analgesics. Although the type of analgesic that I prescribe will depend on how extensive the wound is and the medical history of the patient to select the best anti um, the best analgesic. Then you have to administer antibiotics when you're caring for your patient because you want to prevent infection. Then you have to do wound dressing, which includes you cleaning and dressing the wound. The cleaning agent and the dressing agent also depends on the size of the wound how extensive the wound is and how often you're going to be dressing the wound or the cause of the wound, the type of the wound. There are different things you put into consideration to select the best form of cleaning agent or dressing agent. Are we together? Then you would also have to um, counsel your patient on proper nutrition because usually you want the patients to take high um, protein diets as well as high calorie diets to help them build the lost body tissue. Then you also want them to take vitamins which will help the wound to heal better as well. Then you might also have to do what's called a wound debridement or debridement part of my pronunciation which is actually the removal of dead tissues from the surfaces of the wounds to help the healing process if some wounds are very extensive screen grafting may have to be done and there are different types of dressing just like i mentioned you may even have to do open dressing closed dressing vacuum dressing it's a whole lot so you can refer back to your textbooks to read more on wound dressing because i won't be diving so much into that in this video so if you watch this point and you've not yet subscribed to my channel Please do that now and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!